Hello. <laughs> Finally, some feedback. I've been waiting for that. Um, my name is Marius. Now I'm going to talk about the living virtual high definition 3D graphics over our remote protocol. Oh. One way to put it. So before I go ahead with the agenda and go through all the other slides, I'm going to talk briefly about myself. Who am I? I work as a senior solution advisor at Comax. Comax is a distributor for Microsoft, Citrix, and Dell, among other, and uh, also others. Um, I work as a you know consultant advisor. I'm also an uh, instructor on Microsoft, Citrix networking, and Veeam. So um, I usually play around with all the cu cool new features coming uh, coming out. So I always keep my hands busy and dirty. Uh, I'm also a Microsoft MVP for System Center Configuration Manager. So why am I speaking about 3D? <laughs> Let's see if I actually know something about it. I'm also on social media. If anyone wants to ask a question during the session, please please raise your hand or throw something at me. I can gain my attention. Or you can send me a tweet or give me a comment or send me an email. What's that rock star? The rock star. Glad you asked. I have, a, I have a presentation for it, but I don't have the time. It's actually a community title that Dell delivers. So it's kind of like Dell for uh, MVP for Dell. And it sounds cool, right? Yeah. yeah. So today's agenda. Why deliver virtual graphics? Why should we invest in buying GPU-enhanced workloads and delivering centrally instead of buying huge so large laptops running GPU locally. So um, I just have a question. How many gamers are there in the audience? Oh, that's so many. Windows on or yeah, only one. OK, yeah, so there's a lot of console gamers or mobile-based gamers here. Um, so then I'm going to go into the different options that we have, or three of those options. There's, of course, other vendors in the market as well, but these are the three vendors that I am. I know, or are capable of talking about. So we have VMware, we have Citrix, and we have Microsoft. So I know there's a couple of VMware employees sitting in the audience, so I have to be careful of what I'm saying. And then I'm going to talk a little bit deeper about the protocols. Why? Because having a, having a powerful service, like having a powerful car, you have a lot of horsepower. But having a Ferrari ru running on Norwegian roads doesn't work well. So think of the road as a protocol. You, you have to have it tuned properly in order for it to work properly. So that's why the protocol is important. And I'm also going to talk a little about other stuff like flash link redirection. And of course, other stuff like peripheral access and support as well. So. Why virtually enhanced graphics? First off, there's a lot more GPU-based workload these days. So who here has had trouble with Office 2013 and hardware accelerated feature enabled? And there we go, we see one hand. Same goes for Google Chrome, Internet Explorer. So if they see a GPU or graphic card installed on a computer, they try to use it in order to do offload processing. So there's a blogger called Helge Klein. He made a blog post article comparing the performance of these applications without the GPU and with a GPU. And I saw that the performance differences was quite, well, it's up to 20% better performance if you had a GPU installed. So that's, a lot, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of percentage. And of course, these are just a regular office or regular, regular uh, application. You have, of course, Adobe, Photoshop, which also allows us to use GPU, which are installed. And you have also the CAD applications, engineers using it to create 3D models. Or, for instance, in the oil sector, you have these engineers which has, which has these large laptops. They weigh about 15 kilos or something. It's quite heavy. Think about if we could centralize that GPU power that they need to use 
and give them an iPad or something. You know, iPad is not a good example, but something else, a lighter laptop, an Ultrabook, and they can access the GPU resources they need when they need it. And that's my second point. Enabling bring your own. So users who require access to GPU workloads can use any type of device they want to. Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, etc. And they can access these resources when they need to, instead of having a GPU installed on the laptop and only using it about 15-20% of the time. Now, I myself would like to have a GPU installed so I can use it for gaming, but for other users, it might be a good advantage. So, before I go ahead and start about the different options, there's a lot of keywords I want to uh, talk a little bit about, so we're on the same page when I start discussing the different options. So, first off, GPU. Simple one. Graphic card, right? Graphic processing unit. You have software-based GPU, meaning that if there's no GPU available, the application starts running on CPU instead. And if you're trying to run, for instance, a GPU workload, for instance, Adobe on CPU, you're going to get a horrible exp experience. vGPU. This is a new term which has arisen. It's an NVIDIA technology, but it's a fully virtualized graphics card. Meaning that you have a virtual machine which has dedicated access to the GPU installed underneath. There's no hypervisor in between. And has dedicated memory, dedicated cores available on the GPU. Now, this is, as I said, it's an NVIDIA technology. So I'm going to come back to a little bit about, about that later, about the requirements and what's happened there. And you have, of course, something called API Intercept, which Microsoft uses in their own technology called Microsoft Remote FX vGPU. And VMware has vSGA, Shared Graphics Adapter. So what it does is basically that it divides the, divides the GPU into memory and assigns memory to the virtual machine running. But when the virtual machine needs to do a 3D rendering or any uh, APIs that require GPU, the hypervisor is standing in between and doing API interception. So the G virtual machine talks to the hypervisor, and the hypervisor sends the APIs to the GPU. So the hypervisor is, uh, is like a middleman. And you can, of course, have bare metal, meaning that you have a GPU installed running on a physical Windows server, and you have some sort of software running on top of it. If you want to have fully dedicated access to uh, entire GPU. And you have, of course, pass-through mode, meaning that I can have a server, I can have a GPU installed, and I can say to the hypervisor that you need to map this GPU to a virtual machine. So this is kind of the same thing like bare metal, because you have native capabilities on the GPU allocated to the virtual machine. So it's almost the same as bare metal, but you have a hypervisor in between. So VMware has support for this. Citrix Send Server has support for this. Microsoft, they don't have it. And you have, of course, the Microsoft RDP stack with terminal servers. So who here works with RDS? From a, yeah. And you have Citrix with its Send Desktop, Send App product suite using a protocol which is um, called ECA or HDX, you can choose yourself. So who here uses Citrix? Oh, okay, a lot more hands. And you have VMware Horizon View, which uh, lately gain, had the capabilities to use terminal servers as well, but they don't have their own protocol. They have a cooperation with a company called Teradici, which has invented the protocol called PC over IP. So who here has View? You're from VMware, you don't count. <laughs> um, you also have a technology called CUDA, which is a NVIDIA feature 
which allows NASA and medical, uh, the medical teams develop code that run native on the GPU. Now there's a lot of new software coming which takes use of this capability because it runs a lot better using and then other uh, API platforms I'm going to talk about afterwards. And you have OpenGL. Uh, OpenGL is an API platform or standard for creating, creating um, software, 3D software. Um, a lot of vendors are using it. For instance, Google Earth uses OpenGL library when you're creating. And there's also a lot of other. Adobe has support for OpenGL. A lot of games these days coming out on Macintosh and so use OpenGL because they can't use the other one, which I'm going to talk about afterwards, which is called DirectX. Now this is Microsoft's uh, OpenGL version called DirectX. So th they only, they, uh, it's a Microsoft proprietary protocol, uh, API, so it only supports Windows. And it also is used on the Xbox, hence the X in front of the box, because it's built on DirectX. Makes sense? And you have another pro API protocol called OpenCL, which is a new version of OpenGL in some ways, but also allows for nati native code to run directly on uh, the GPU. But CUDA is an NVIDIA feature. OpenCL is, is a collaboration between uh, different software vendors. So, what does Microsoft have? They have RemoteFX vGPU with RDP. And as I mentioned, vGPU is actually just slicing the uh, GPU into slots of memory and assigning the video memory to the virtual machines, which are running inside. The problem with this feature is that now it has full support for DirectX, low support for OpenGL, it requires Hyper-V 2012 or 2012 R2, works on both of them. It requires a DirectX 11 capable GPU, which also supports Windows uh, VDDM, I don't remember what it's called, drivers. Requires a generation one virtual machine, as long as you're running on Hyper-V. And another interesting requirement is that you can only use this on VDI. Meaning that if I want to re use remote FX vGPU, I can only set up Hyper-V with Windows 7 Enterprise or Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 Enterprise inside virtual machines. I can't use Windows Server inside and allocate GPU to those. So that's, uh, that was a huge limitation when it came. And it also requires that the endpoint accessing the VDI needs to be Windows as well because you need to have the latest RDP client support for 8.1 if you intend to take use of the uh, RemoteFX vGPU. So if you try to connect to a uh, VDI using RemoteFX vGPU from your phone, for instance, it will fall back to regular software vGPU. So I have to speak about the future as well. What's coming in vNext? Now, there's not so much new stuff coming, except you have now support for Windows Server as well. So I can allocate virtual memory to a Windows Server, terminal server running. I also have full support for the latest OpenGL version 4.4, which is a huge step in Microsoft adapting other APIs other than DirectX because a lot of the other software vendors like Adobe and all those CAD applications use OpenGL as a rendering engine. And the version they support now, 1.1 in Windows Server 2012 R2 is like, I don't know, five, six, seven years old. Now, there's also another option, bare metal GPU. I can install a GPU on a physical server and I can um, access it using any type of protocol. Problem is that it's, it's restricted by the protocol in use because if I set up a Windows Server 2012 R2 with a GPU and access it, I have full ca native capabilities of the GPU, 
But if I have a crappy protocol, the end user experience is not going to be so good as I want it to be. And of course, it's not very cost efficient if I want to have one server with one GPU here and there. Now, what does VMware have? As I mentioned, they have the same ki kind of capability that Microsoft has. VSGA, as I said, slices the memory, signs it to a virtual machine. There you go. A little bit of difference here that VSGA supports only DirectX 9, but it has a higher support for OpenGL 2.1. And of course, it has its own requirements, like you have a ESX version, 5.1, U1, 5.5, Horizon View, 5.2 or later. And of course, um, this, the GPU has to be on VMware HL, HCL. Same goes for Microsoft, of course. I need to have a supported graphic card in order to use it. Now, VMware also has pass-through mode or direct graphic adapter, graphics adapter. So I get full benefit. I can use every feature on the GPU inside a virtual machine. And then I can install native drivers from the vendor inside the virtual machine, either if it's been NVIDIA or AMD. Now, since it's basically our Windows machine with a GPU, I can use any type of protocol on top of it if I want to since it appears as a native GPU inside the virtual machine. So, what's coming from VMware? Anybody get the latest release uh, update from VMware last week? ESX.6.0? Well, anyways, they've had a preview of running vGPU inside ESX and off top of Horizon View. So that means that we have a fully virtualized GPU, virtual GPU to a virtual machine. And as I mentioned, it's an NVIDIA type of feature. So you, don't, you can't use it with AMD-based GPUs. And of course, it requires view, latest view release, latest, uh, latest ESX release. And you also have native drivers from NVIDIA, which you need to install on the hypervisor. And when you provision a virtual machine with the vGPU, you will get a virtual graphics card from which NVIDIA provisions for you. Now, why I mentioned CUDA initially is because it's not supported on vGPU. It, uh, it's only supported having a native GPU or device pass-through mode. But uh, this is arriving in a month or so, so it's coming. Now, Citrix has two options. Either I can use pass-through, can have sensor, smack in a GPU, do a, do a pass-through mode to a virtual machine, or I can use vGPU, which SenServer has had for uh, over a year or so. It's still NVIDIA technology, so it has the same kind of capabilities, supports the latest OpenGL release, DirectX, Requires latest version of Send Server, or well, not the latest, but 4 and 6.2. And you should have Send Desktop 7 from above and up upwards. So when I create a vGPU, I have different profiles that I can use, depending on what type of users who need access, depending on the requirements. I don't know if you can't see it very well. I'll try to zoom in. But anyways. If you want to use vGPU, you need to have one of two cards. It's NVIDIA Grid K1 or K2 cards. Now the K1 card has four physical GPUs. So it's like having four CPUs on a card. On the Grid K2 card, you have two GPUs, which are a lot more power, horsepower in them. And then I can allocate these GPUs depending on what type of users I need, uh, what kind the user needs. If it's a designer, power user, information knowledge worker. You know, knowledge worker is typically a guy that goes in and checks YouTube or Facebook or whatever, has some kind of media. Designer is typically when you have 3D rendering, 
Photoshop, among other things. But as I mentioned, having all that horsepower is not going to be efficient if I don't have a good remote protocol to actually deliver the content out to the users. So we have three protocols, Citrix HDX, regular TCP-based traffic. So who here knows the difference between TCP and UDP? So UDP spits out traffic, doesn't wait for acknowledgement from the uh, receiving end, just spits out traffic. It's like I'm trying to say something to my son, go clean up your room. I'm not sure if he gets it, but I'm actually going and speaking to him. And TCP is like when my wife is talking to me. Can you go and purchase blah, blah, blah on the supermarket? And I need to say, yes, sir, and I go and do it. So it requires acknowledgement. It's a lot more overhead on TCP than using UDP. So there's a lot of tuning involved if you want to use a TCP-based protocol. So Microsoft uses both TCP and UDP. I'm going to show that afterwards, how you can see it. Because if you, for instance, try to use IRO or uh, Windows 8.1 and you didn't use, look on a new uh, Metro interface, all the graphics is going to be processed over the UDP port. And all the mouse clicks is going to be processed using TCP. Because TCP is a reliable protocol while UDP is not. And VMware PC over IP uses the same, TCP and UDP. And they also have support for RDP as well. So I can either connect to an instance using PC, PC over IP or I can use RDP. Now, all of these three vendors have support for almost any device. Now, the reason why there's an exclamation or a star between the Microsoft, Microsoft client support is because they don't support vGPU on other devices than Windows. That's not the same for Citrix and VMware. They have full support on the device. I can also use HTML5 clients if I want to. So as an initial test, when uh, we, we got this hardware at work, I wanted to try it out. You now we had a new servers, we had a new NVIDIA cards. And me and my coworker, we both, well, no, we play games on an occasion. And what we did is to actually benchmark it, is we installed World of Warcraft on a server, two virtual machines, tried to access them using our iPads. Hey, it worked. So the technology is there, and it's working. Now, all of these three different devices or protocols also have secure access deployments. So for Citrix, we have something called Netscaler Gateway, which publish, publishes um, all the traffic using port 43. So it tunnels all the traffic. Now, Microsoft, with their RDS Gateway, uses the same, except you have the option to use UDP as well as TCP in the latest release. This is in order to optimize performance. And when uh, from uh, RDP point seven to dot eight, Microsoft managed to manage to uh, improve the performance or the compression capabilities about ten, t ten times the amount. There's a lot of improvement coming from Microsoft. And uh, VMware has their own security server, which basically does the same, port 443 and you require the same, same uh, PC or IP ports. In regards to redirection support, what, is, what it means is that if I go onto a terminal server and I start a link video chat, do you think it's going to consume a lot of resources on the server? Or if I have five or ten users trying to do the same, it's going to use a lot of resources on the terminal server or the VDI instance. And with redirection, it means that it, it's offloading the rendering traffic from the terminal server to the endpoint. So all these three vendors have support for flash redirection, meaning that I can start my terminal server session on my phone, start a YouTube video using flash, and all of it will be offloaded to running on this device locally, even though I, it seems like I'm running, running it centrally on the server. 
So both vendors, have, uh, or three, all three vendors have support for Windows Media, Flash, and Link, well, almost everyone. Uh, and there's a, Microsoft has a plugin for Link called VDI plugin, which basically allows that offloading capability in Link 2013. And it only supports Link Server 20, 2013. Um, Citrix has created their own package called uh, HGX Optimization Pack for Link, which has support for Link 2010, as well as Office 365 redirection. And regarding to peripheral support, it's basically the same. They both have support for USB drives, uh, hot add devices, microphones, webcams, and USB 3.0, which is becoming the new standard. Now, why there's a star on the VMware is because it supports having a USB 3.0 device on a USB 2.0 port. Microsoft, if I try to put in a USB 3.0 device on a USB 2.0 port, ah, I mean the other way around. If I have a USB 2.0 device on a USB 3.0 port, that's going to work. That's not going to work. Citrix has full support for USB 3.0 and USB 3.0 devices on the USB 3.0 port. And I also have a, for the latest point is that one compression capabilities. Now, Microsoft has come a long way in, in regards to compressing the data that's sent over the one link when I'm doing something on the device. But VMware and Citrix are a lot better. So when I was doing a benchmark test on Microsoft and comparing it to VMware and Citrix, I saw that Microsoft was consuming at least a same uh, double the amount of bandwidth than Citrix and VMware were using. So it's come a long way, but it's still a step, uh, st the others are still a st step ahead. So let's do a demo. Hopefully it works. Uh, I have three demos I want to show you. First is I'm going to go into the remote effects instance, show how it's set up, how it works. And this is all using the wireless here. So please shut down your torrents or uh, FTP servers or whatever you're running before I go ahead and add. And the same goes for Citrix. I'm going to show running on a Windows 7 vGPU virtual machine instance. And I'm also going to show VMware with the shared graphics adapter as well. And this is all using the native or the default profile. So I haven't tweaked anything to do any vendor a favor. So let's change the screen output. There we go. So first things first. So let's head on over to my remote effects VGPU. So this is a Windows 7 instance. It's running remote effects using TCP and UDP. And I can see that because it says it's using P UDP as well. It's enabled. That's great. So how can I see it's using a vGPU adapter? I can skip on over to my device manager, display adapters. This is here, Microsoft Remote FX graphics device. Okay, I can also see that if I run the diagnostic tools for DirectX, I can see what kind of support I have for running room Remote FX or we need DirectX. You see the feature levels here. It says what kind of how many video, how much memory I have, and what kind of capabilities I have access to. So this is op this is Google Earth running on top of DirectX. So if I didn't have a DirectX capable GPU, this wouldn't this wouldn't work at all. So Google Earth comes in two versions. Either I can use OpenGL or I can use the DirectX version. If I try to start the OpenGL version on this GPU, it wouldn't start. I just get an error message. Now, so you can see here. It's lagging quite a bit because RDP is still uh, 
quite dependent on the latency. So it's not a great user experience using remote effects. It's much more efficient using on typical flash or paint or something. I also have another benchmarking tool called the Valley, which I'm going to show a little bit of. Let's just see how it works. So this is here I can define what kind of API I want to test it on. DirectX 10, now 11, 9, or OpenGL. I'm going to shut off the full screen. I'm going to show a bit lower resolution just to make it sure it flows properly. So I checked the latency before I started. I had about 140, 80 milliseconds. Now, since I'm using Microsoft RDS, oh, there we go. Just give it a second. Play the waiting game for a while. While I do that, I can skip on over to my other server just to show how it's set up. So if you want to use vGPU on uh, Hyper-V, so what do we need to do? First, we need to have Hyper-V server, GPU install. Go into Hyper-V uh, Hyper manager, Hyper-V settings. Click under the physical GPU tab, and my GPU will appear, and I can choose this, use this GPU remote effects, click OK. So that's step one of step two. I need to create generation one virtual machine. Click settings, add hardware, and here I have something called remote FX 3D video adapter. So I click on it, I add it, already have it here, and then I define the number of monitors and resolution. Okay, so what does that mean? It basically defines how much memory is going to be allocated to virtual machine. Is that generation one? Generation one. So if no, so if you try to create a generation two, the remote effects video adapter wouldn't appear at all. So that's a step backwards. And I've also been told it's not going to change in the next version of Hyper-V. So here's the benchmark starting. Seems to flow pretty OK. Now. <laughs> When the RDP optimization protocol kicks in, it starts in a couple of seconds after it's started, and it tries to optimize the frames and compresses the frames, which is sent out backwards to the user. So it's it's okay experience. Wouldn't recommend it for any trying to do any 3D rendering or modeling. So, we are where? Just have to log on in here again. So, this is running with a shared graphics adapter from VMware. Same, same amount of memory which the Windows 7 instance or Windows 8 instance had on my Windows server or Windows, Windows client user remote effects. So I can see that it's using a VMware SVGA 3D adapter. It's great. I can also run the DirectX Diagnostics tool just to see how much I have. Now, here I see that I don't have the latest DirectX capabilities, but that's only because I'm running Windows 7 and not Windows 8, as I was running on the RemoteFX client. So, I can also spin around on Google Earth again. Uh, not going to do so much good, but I can do the valley one more time. Or oh, this is what's going to work, so I'm going to try DirectX 9. Now, underneath, even though there's the Windows Remote FX uh, client was using an uh, AMD ATI Fire Pro card, but while well, this one is using NVIDIA Grid K2 card, so it's a lot more horsepower running underneath here. 
So here you see the frames are 40 or 30 all the, almost all the time. CPU is spiking a bit. So I'm guessing the issue here is the latency involved in the one connection. Which either needs some tuning or I have to. But it seems you have a, you, you have a lot better experience using VMware instead of Microsoft, which I've seen because I've tested it a lot lately. So in order to set this up on VMware, um, you have to go into the web console or WebSpear web client, find a virtual machine which has which is allocated in a host, which has a GPU install. Go into settings of the virtual machine. Go into video card and specify. Oh, that's the software one. Need to do on the shared graphics adapter VM. Video card specify how much memory I want allocated from the physical GPU to the virtual machine. So I'm just going to stop the demo here. And last, we have Citrix. Now this is using vGPU from NVIDIA. I'm not an administrator here, so I have to specify my credentials. Just to show the adapter. So here you see we have a virtual, virtual GPU from NVIDIA using the K280 profile which basically means I'm allocating one physical GPU directly to this virtual machine. Yes? And did you agree to, uh, that's the name of the cloud graphics tree for uh, NVIDIA? No. NVIDIA Grid, in, the, in, this, in this case, is basically the GPU which is installed underneath. Yeah, I understood that, but it's the same name. Uh, is there any I don't think there's any correlation between those two. Yeah, okay. I, I haven't heard about the cloud-based solution that you're talking about, so might be. So let's try running again. This time we're running on vGPU. Now... This benchmarking tool is the same guys that's created the game called Unreal Tournament, which so is using the Unreal Gaming Engine. Now you can see that uh, graphics um, became a bit, a bit uh, less texture on it because you uh, have a uh, you have a profile kicking in, which tries to compromise based on the how much bandwidth is available in the WAN profile. But when I'm trying to use either one of these three vendors, I use about one megabyte per second, two megabytes if I'm using Microsoft. Each time I'm running this in a full screen mode. So if I want to use vGPU on send server, yes? How sensible is, is this to uh, latency? It's really sensible to latency. Uh, Running across the world isn't really work. Well, you need to tune it properly. We, uh, we, uh, we went on business travel to Kiel for a couple of months ago. And we tuned our profiles, both the uh, uh, network access point and 
the profiles on the vendor Citrix and VMware, and we tuned it based on the latency we were using, and it worked okay. I've also seen guys running it on top when they're traveling on an airplane across the Atlantic, using. They can, if yeah, they can, it's it's possible. You just have to tune it, depending on their needs, of course. But you had a question as well. No, it's not. And since it's mostly TCP-based traffic, you're quite sensible to latency, unless you have the right congestion algorithm, which is, and depending on. Well, I can give an example because congestion algorithm defines how how it's gonna work in latency environments. So you can define a congestion algorithm based if you're connecting to a local network with a cable, or if you're using wireless. So I can define profiles based on if a user is connecting using a uh, network uh, cable, or if they're using 3G or 4G or Wi-Fi. Yeah. So as you can see, I don't have any cables here right now. I have power to support, but that's because I have a. No, no, using the NIC 2015. So you're the guy downloading torrents, so <laughs> ruining my demo. So if I want to add a vGPU to a send virtual machine running on send server, I have to have a GPU installed. I have to install some drivers and latest service pack. I have a tab here called GPU, which will display my GPU grid 2 card. And on the right side here, I can define what kind of type of GPUs I want to use. I can use pass-through. I can use the 280 card or 280 virtual card. It says that I can have one per GPU. And in a K2 card, I have two physical GPUs, meaning I can have two virtual instances running on Q28. 280. And here I can see that I've used up all my slots. Now, with vGPU, now let's say I have a VMware cluster or a Microsoft cluster using, um, or Citrix cluster or VMware cluster using pass through mode, then I can't use vMotion anymore or line migration because you have a raw device mapping of the device underneath. But with vGPU, if I have two hosts running, which both, both have GPU cards, I can use migration between them. But if I have a raw device mapping, I can't. So let's just skip that here. Hopefully the screen works as it should. So if you're planning on deploying or setting up a GPU-based solution, always important to figure out some key, key things. What applications are in use? Are the power users using Internet Explorer, Chrome, Office? Or are they using some sort of application to create 3D rendering or doing editing on movies, etc. Photoshop. What kind of operating system support they require? Do they need to have a server, or, does that, or doesn't the application support it? Do you have, need to have Windows 7 or Windows 8 instances running? What kind of APIs are in use? Is it DirectX? Is it OpenGL? Is it CUDA? Because the Support level is uh, different depending on the vendor. What kind of endpoints do they support? Now, as I mentioned, VMware and Citrix support almost any device, either HTML5 support as well. And of course, how much money do you have? Because of the three vendors, of course, Microsoft is the cheapest. If you have Windows Server, you have remote effects. Of course, I just need the terminal license as well. But VMware and Citrix cost a little extra. 
but they also give a lot better performance both locally on the virtual machines and higher support for APIs and a lot better VAN performance. So, I made a little summarize or conclusion just to show the differences between the different deployment types. So I can have a software-based GPU solution, no GPU installed, doesn't cost me a lot, I just need a server. Now, depending on the use, it's very cost-effective because I don't have to buy the new GPU cards as well, which cost about 25% of our traditional server, depending if I want to have the NVIDIA style or the AMD style. I can use bare metal RDSH with a GPU. It's not very cost-effective. And, and um, doesn't scale. And with bare metal, I have native capabilities of a GPU, which means I can use everything that's supported. Now, app compatibility is depending on the operating system installed, of course. I can also use bare metal Senap, which has the same capabilities. I can use pass through, which is basically the same, while I have a hypervisor in between. And I can use Remote FX, which is a VDI based solution. Doesn't support a Windows Server yet. Now, Microsoft recently, recently announced that the next version of Windows Server is coming next year. So we have to wait until then to actually try it on Windows Server. And also, we have VMware with its VSGA solution, which performs a bit better, even though it's kind of the same API intercept solution that Microsoft has. So uh, we, s we saw a really good increase on the performance after we did the latest view update. I couldn't remember what version it was, but there was a lot of improvement there. So we saw it on the when we were running benchmark tests after we upgraded the last version. And you have, of course, Citrix vGPU, which performs even better than shared graphics adapter. And it scales better but it's also coming to VMware in a month or so. So, uh, any questions? Does anyone, yeah? Sure. How about the same desktop in VMware? Um, we, uh, Citrix has mentioned that when VMware comes with vGPU support, they will try to support it as fast as they can. So I've spoken to the, to the woman who's responsible for the 3D HDA stack in Citrix. So they're just waiting for VMware to launch it so, or release it so they can try to adapt it in their, in their suite. But I can also use pass-through if I have VMware. But they don't support shared uh, graphics adapter. Anyone else? Okay. That's all I had to say. Thank you so much for listening, and hopefully you'll give me a good review on the, on the exit. Thank you.